Which one it is? But the crust. Who cares? Who kind of likes exactly what it is? Yeah, I missed the banjo. Of course, you're on time today. That's nice. Let me put arms around you. It was meant. The piano is beautiful on it. I want you to bring the blue thing that Colleen brought suit on. Because I thought I'll try to catch up with her at some point. Huh? Um, did you bring this? Oh, I thought you said you had that eagle. Uh, oh no, that's for Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. So confused. yeah. I'm obviously confused. I mean, I had I don't remember who's singing what when. I missed you. I missed being here, but I got I went and got the all clear, full speed ahead. But I got mad at her. I said I gotta work in this. Oh my god. I have never I didn't have to pay. He's a nice guy right now. I got pretty good from around this I think in the industry. I told him, I said, please tell me I didn't sign anything official. That was not in my right mind. Apparently I've had conversations. Mallory said, have you I've told you this twice. This is, I don't remember that. Everything's all back to normal. so that people will be in their way? Yes. Okay, got it. And if Ryan's reading from there, obviously the microphone will have to stop. I think it says maybe. Oh, by the way, it's perfect. I 
I'm going to take the no. Um, Anyone else wants some Chex Mix? I can share. <laughs> Not tonight. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do that. We've got a whole. Maybe, maybe for the vigil. Maybe. Oh, what am I seeking in? Oh. Maybe. I haven't, I haven't thought about it yet. <laughs>
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins, the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month will be the first month. It will be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole Israelite community, on the 10th day of this month, they must take a lamb for each household, a lamb per house. If a household is too small for a lamb, it should share one with the neighbor nearby. You should divide the lamb in proportion to the number of people who will be eating it. The lamb should be flawless, should be a flawless year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You should keep close watch over it until the 14th day of this month. At twilight on that day, the whole assembled Israelite community should slaughter their lambs. They should take some of the blood and smear it on the two doorposts and on the beam over the door of the houses in which they are eating. That same night, they should eat the meat roasted over the fire. They should eat it along with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Don't eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over fire with its head, legs, and internal organs. Don't let any of it remain until morning and burn any of it left over in the morning. This is how you should eat it. You should be dressed with your sandals on your feet and your walking stick in your hand. You should eat the meal in a hurry. It is the Passover of the Lord. I'll pass through the land of Egypt that night and I'll strike down every oldest child in the land of Egypt, both humans and animals. I'll impose judgments on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be your sign on the houses where you live. Whenever I see the blood, I'll pass over you. No plague will destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. 
This day will be a day of remembering for you. You will observe it as a festival to the Lord. You will observe it in every generation as a regulation for all time. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks. Our psalm response is this portion of Psalm 116. We'll say this psalm responsively or antiphonally by whole verse. My side will say the odds and this side will say the evens. I love the Lord because the Lord has heard the voice of my supplication and inclined an ear to me whenever I cried out. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all the chosen people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my house to the Lord in the presence of all the people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. A reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. I received a tradition from the Lord, which which I also handed on to you. On the night on which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took the bread. After giving thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this to remember me. He did the same thing with a cup. After they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do this to remember me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you broadcast the death of the Lord until he comes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them fully. Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. The devil had already provoked Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew the Father had given everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table and took off his robes. Picking up a linen towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. No, Peter said, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. Simon Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus responded, those who have bathed need only to have their feet washed because they are completely clean. You disciples are clean, but not every one of you. He knew who would betray him. That's why he said, not every one of you is clean. After he washed the disciples' feet, he put on his robes and returned to his place at the table. He said to them, do you know what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak correctly because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. I have given you an example just as I have done. You also must do. I assure you, servants aren't greater than their master, nor are those who are sent greater than the one who sent them. Since you know these things, you will be happy if you do them. When Judas was gone, Jesus said, Now the human one has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify the human one in himself and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I'm with you for a little while longer. You will look for me, but just as I told the Jewish leaders, I also tell you now where I'm going, you can't come. I give you a new commandment, love each other. Just as I have loved you, so also must love each other. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciples when you love each other. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Open the ears of our hearts, Lord, that we might trust you and truly listen to your voice. Amen. Our reading today from the Gospel of John, to me, is the most profound passage of Scripture ever written. Actually, I'd go so far as to say it is the most profound passage in the history of the world because it gives the most vibrant, clear portrait of love that has ever existed. It is an explanation of true love that is sorely needed in our world, because our world is full of people who are terribly confused about what love really is, and yet are starving for the real thing. This passage begins with the statement that Jesus, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them fully. And it closes with Jesus saying, I give you a new commandment, love each other, just as I have loved you, so you also must love each other. And in between, 
Jesus washes his disciples' feet in both a symbolic and practical expression of the love he asks them to offer each other. He's giving his disciples an example that he wants them to follow. He knows it is the key to their happiness. It happens that the act of foot washing is an excellent vehicle for Jesus to get his meaning across. It functioned as what I would call life as metaphor because of the cultural context of New Testament times. You see, in Jesus' day, there was a long established cultural tradition of foot washing. It was a means of offering hospitality that we don't have in our culture today. We see this custom in action as far back as in Abraham's day when he received the divine messengers at the Oaks of Mamre saying, sirs, if you would be so kind, don't just pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought so you may wash your feet and refresh yourselves under the tree. In Greco-Roman society during the New Testament times, foot washing also was also a sign of hospitality and welcome. And it was often associated with a meal or banquet. However, in Jesus' day, foot washing was performed almost exclusively by slaves and servants. This is the custom that John the Baptist was speaking of when he referred to Jesus saying, someone greater stands among you who you don't recognize. He comes after me, but I am not worthy to untie his sandal straps. What John the Baptist meant was that he was not worthy to wash Jesus' feet. The fact that it was the role of an inferior to wash the feet of a superior is what Jesus, I'm sorry, is what Peter was reacting to when at first he refused to allow Jesus to wash his feet. By washing his disciples' feet as their Lord and teacher, Jesus intentionally dissolved the social classes that so often serve as barriers to love. Then he commanded his disciples to wash each other's feet and love one another in the same way he had loved them. So then, what does it mean for Jesus to have loved his disciples fully? What did it look like? Well, for one thing, Jesus spent time with his disciples. He traveled with them. He ate with them, stayed with them. He knew them well, and he knew their families and took part in caring for them. Jesus supported the spiritual growth of his disciples, and he prayed for them. He loved them in spite of their faults and foibles, or maybe even because of them. For example, Jesus nicknamed James and John sons of thunder, which says to me that Jesus acknowledged that James and John were hotheads, as in, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Yes, they really did say that. And Jesus loved them anyway. Jesus called Peter the rock, even when Peter wasn't yet the rock God intended him to be. And Jesus loved him anyway. Throughout the Gospels, everywhere you look, whenever people encountered Jesus' love, they were made whole. True love is like that. It heals people. It causes people to grow, and it moves them toward what we would call fullness of life. Jesus is a master of this kind of love. 
This is how he loved his disciples, each and every one of them. You know, for as many times as I have read or heard this story of how Jesus shared the evening meal with his disciples and washed their feet, I don't think I appreciated what a small, intimate group of his disciples he was addressing with his commandment to love each other. In the past, I mostly viewed this commandment for Jesus' disciples to love everyone. But on closer inspection, I realize now that Jesus was specifically instructing his small band of disciples to love each other. My thought is that Jesus gave his disciples this commandment because he knew the hardships his disciples were soon going to face. And he knew his disciples were going to need each other. So he gave them a commandment to love each other just like he had loved them fully. As I thought about this passage, it occurred to me that as a disciple of Jesus in the here and now, I also belong to a band of disciples. My band of disciples is called St. Michael's Episcopal Church. In other words, you are my band of disciples. So I can't help but wonder what would it like for me to love you in the same way that Jesus loves you? What would it look like for all of us at St. Michael's to love each other fully? It has got me thinking. So with that question in mind, I'd like to close with a story from our presiding bishops, Michael Curry's book, Love is the Way. He, he wrote, not too long ago, I was making a pastoral visit for a church convention in one of our dioceses in the Southwest. The day concluded with a banquet at which I was the speaker. Afterward, I was receiving people one by one for brief conversations and selfies. Among the people in line, I, noted a beard, I noticed a bearded man in casual clothes towering over the others. He had to be at least six foot five. And while everyone was smiling, chattering, and holding smartphones for their selfies, he was solitary and serious. I couldn't read his expression. It was clear that he was experiencing the moment differently from those around him. I felt my danger antenna twitch, but did nothing. When he came closer, I could see his eyes. They were somewhat red. Was he angry or had he cried? When he reached me, I was slightly wary, but he immediately extended his large open hand. I'm so glad that you're my bishop and that you're my brother, he said. He told me his story. He had grown up with a father and grandfather who called themselves Christians, but were leaders in the Ku Klux Klan. But he had left home for college, then moved to a small town in Arkansas. While there, he wandered into a small Episcopal church in town, even though, or perhaps because, it was not the church of his upbringing. As time went on, he got to know the people in this little church well enough to share his family story, which was still a source of great pain. And then he said, and they loved me anyway. They taught him about the God who loves unconditionally and helped him find the truth of his faith. They healed him. And I would say they washed his feet. Let us do the same for each other.
fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet. This is not in your bulletin, so you can stop looking for it. (laughs) By washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God did not come by power or by authority or even miracle, but by lowly service. Therefore, I invite you all who share in his royal priesthood to come forward, that we may recall whose servant we are by following the example of our brother, our teacher, and our friend. Come remembering his reminder that what will be done for us is also to be done by us to others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you who do them. If you have not come up to have your feet washed in a few years, I'll let you know that there are chairs with armrests, so they're easier to get in and out of and also stools for folks to sit on if your joints would need that. Um, There will be people moving around, refreshing water, towels. The choir has a lot of music for us to sing. So um, come forward as you feel so led to imitate Christ and to be loved by your band of disciples.
thyself in the sight of the Lord. We are a moment, you are
stand for the prayers of the people. As we journey this week with Christ and celebrate the Paschal mystery of his death and resurrection, let us earnestly pray to God for those following the way of the cross and for all peoples everywhere. For the Holy Catholic Church throughout the world, sharing the death and resurrection of Christ, in your mercy, hear, hear us, us, O God. God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, John, our bishop, for all who minister in Christ and for all the holy people of God, in your mercy, hear, hear us, us, O God. God. For all nations, peoples throughout the world, and for justice, mercy, and peace, in your mercy, hear, hear us, us, O God. God. For all who are tempted, oppressed, afflicted or in need for Emily and Kyle, Jennifer, Sue, Amy, Dennis and Deborah and Kaki. For, the, for those with continuing needs, Terry, Zachary, Bethany and Joe, in your mercy, 
Hear us, us, O God. God. For our families, friends, and companions, and for all those we love, in your mercy, hear Hear us, us, O God. God. For the dying, and for Jerry and others who have died, and for those who mourn, in your mercy, hear Hear us, us, O God. God. Eternal God, in the sharing of a meal, your Son established a new covenant for all people. And in the washing of feet, he showed us the dignity of service. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these signs of our life and faith may speak again to our hearts, feed our spirits, and refresh our bodies. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. Peace. 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 Peace, 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 peace. God's peace and welcome to this feast of Monday Thursday, the feast of the mandatum or God's commandment to love one another. Whether you are joining us online, hi Kathy, or in person, it's wonderful to be together as we begin the Triduum together. I wanted to draw your attention, we have a new chalice and patent that we'll be using for the first time this evening. Um, This set was made by a group of Palestinian potters who are refugees from the West Bank. And there's an organization in the United Kingdom that has made uh, a pottery studio available to them so that they can continue their livelihood. So we stand united, this part of the body of Christ here in Little Rock united with our siblings across the world and as we are united across time with Jesus in memory of the Last Supper. Following the Lord's Supper, we will um, continue our service. All of the Holy Week services are really one service, so there's no dismissal tonight. So following the service, we will have the post-communion prayer. The choir will um, sing a song, and then we will begin to remove items from the altar in preparation for Good Friday. You're invited to stay in your seats uh, to watch that process for as long as you would like. And then we will leave when it's over. (laughs) um, You're welcome to enter a spirit of of meditation while the altar is being stripped. Do you have anything to uh, say? Okay. Uh, This is God's table. I love what that hymn we sang, God's good table. This is God's good table, and it's for all of God's good people. What I ask of you is that you walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give God thanks and praise God of all power ruler of the universe you are worthy of glory and praise glory to you forever and ever at your command all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space galaxies suns the planets and their courses and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you joining with the heavenly chorus with prophets apostles and martyrs and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we, we celebrate his death and resurrection as, as we await, await the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen, Risen Lord, be, be known, known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Loving God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen.
heart is nearly broken with sorrow. Remain here with me. Stay awake and pray. Stay with me. Remain here with me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and not a man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let the Lord deliver him. Let God rescue him if God delights in him. Yet you are the one who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. 
I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to the community. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that are God-fearing. Stand in awe of the Lord, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them, but when they cry out, the Lord hears them. My praise is of God in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall give praise. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to God, and all the families of the nations shall bow before the Lord. For sovereignty belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. To the Lord alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before the Lord. My soul shall live for God. My descendants shall serve the Lord. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that God has done. <laughs> <laughs> 